What's this? Emily and I were out diving deeper than usual. Even in waters as clear, the sun's rays couldn't reach far enough to light up the rested ship lying ominously on the ocean floor. Following a sign from the instructor, we swam around the ship. We were in the middle of a wreck diving course. Wrecking was a little bit different from your average dive. There were special skills and procedures for getting close to or inside shipwrecks that we needed to learn. This is all part of our preparation for exploring the ghost ship. And it would take us about two days to finish the course. But today was our last day. The instructor put up the signal that it was time to head back to the boat. Emma and I gave the okay signal and began our sense. Chisa? Emily, her head bobbing above the surface of the water, waved over to Chisa, who was waiting in the boat. Chisa, it is it was so cool! There's a sunken ship right under us. We got to swim right up close to it. Yes, yes, I am familiar with wrecking. This is my family's business, remember? Well, excuse me. Since it's your family's business, maybe you should be a little more polite to your customers. Man, it's hot. Let's get back. I'm ready to lay down by the AC. What's wrong with our hero? Beats me. Jisa had come with us just as a chaperone. Her family's shop was running the course, so she was required to be there, but I think she was bored staying on the ship. Finn followed alongside the cruiser, dis desperate for some attention from Chisa. <sighs> but she made no move to dive into the water. If you're so hot, you should take a dip. We won't mind. I don't feel like it. Ee -ee. With a flick of his tail, Finn sent a shower of water onto the deck and over Chisa. Thanks, I've cooled down now. E? What's wrong? You'd usually get mad and go in after him. Did something happen between you two at the Bond Festival? I don't know if I'd go that far. The only vaguely significant thing I could think of was that we'd held hands for the first time in years. Nothing else had happened. The atmosphere made it seem like something could have happened. Do you think she's still mad about the whole TV thing? I guess so. She said I had got into an argument with Ryota over her going on TV. I told you, it's not happening! Please, I'm begging you, just for a bit. Ryota put his hands together and bowed his head. That's what you said last time, and the whole show was about me! I can't walk around town without people recognizing me now. I am never going on TV again! Uh, what's all that about? Another television offer has arrived for the fabled Dolphin Girl. Chisa is absolutely opposed to the notion, but Ryota is making feeble attempts at persuasion. Just think about what it could mean for local tourism. It'll be good PR for your family's business, too. <sighs> there was no denying more people had been coming to the diving shop since Chisa made her TV debut. Her dad was so happy he even put up a poster of his famous daughter. The, the way Chisa stared at it, I was surprised it hadn't burst into flames yet. There's no way I'm doing something that embarrassing again. Besides, Finn isn't in exhibit at the aquarium. Oh, jeez, where are you going? To turn down such a heartfelt request from a weeping comrade 
I'm impressed with her emotional resilience. Chisa? Hmm. Ever since then, she hadn't been in the best of moods. <sighs> Here we go. And they climbed into the boat and removed her diving cylinder. I don't see what the big deal is. The last time you did it, you brought in a lot of tourists, right? Then how about you go on instead? You're prettier, and I bet everyone would love you. You think so? Personally, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But there's no way that crazy dolphin would listen to a word I say. And we called out to Finn to demonstrate her points. Come here, Finn. Let me pet you. Hmm. Completely ignored me. There's definitely something wrong with him. Is it the fame that bothers you, Chisa? All the people coming up to you in the street and stuff? No, that's not it. I was hoping she'd say more. Are you mad at me, then? Not really. She turned away. She'd been this way since the Bond Festival. I definitely did something wrong. Or maybe she was angry about something I should have done, but didn't. Girls, am I right? Ee -ee. Finn called out affectionately to Chisa. You should go be with your friends, Finn. Eee? Reluctantly, the dolphin swam off toward open water. Emma and I both let out heavy sighs. We aren't getting anywhere at this rate. Anyway, I think this course has given me a lot more confidence in the water. I feel like I could hop into that ghost ship and find the ring any day now. Emmy was still excited from the experience she had gained during her wreck diving course. Chisa completely ignored the excited Emily and only seemed to get even more lethargic. Don't get too excited. If something goes wrong, you could die, you know. I know, they told us all about it in the safety lecture. Aside from open water instruction, there was also a classroom portion to the course. After a bit more practice, we can finally get to planning our trip. I opened up a pamphlet and set it down on the table. Before it sank, the ghost ship had been a commercial yacht. And we were lucky enough to get some of the old pamphlets used for advertising, complete with a layout of the ship. Uh, do you know which cabin was used by your parents? Ah, uh, yep, it was this one here. Emily pointed to a room on the map. Papa told me it was this room. Uh, the ring should still be in there. Great, that's just the news we needed. We were planning to explore the ship over a number of diving sessions. We'd already gotten close to the wreck as part of Emily's ongoing training. During those dives, I used my underwater camera to take pictures of the exterior of the ship. With the photos and pamphlet, we had a pretty solid idea of what to expect. I'm thinking we should use this route. Uh, what do you think, Chisa? Mm. Chisa? Hmm? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I was listening. Come on, focus! You're the one always telling us to be careful after all. What's going on with you, Chisa? If I've done something wrong, could you at least tell me? I keep telling you, that's not what this is about. What is it about, then? I'm worried about Finn. Well, you haven't really been swimming with him recently. In fact, she hadn't been swimming at all for the last few days. Even when Emily and I went diving, Chisa would just stay in the canoe, looking bored. Did you and that dolphin have a fight? I told you before that Finn was astray, right? Yeah, you said he was chased out of his group. Well, he started swimming with other dolphins again recently. I don't know if it's his original pod or a new one, but it seems like he wants to go back to dolphin society. Hmm. Is that what's making you sad? Is it a good thing? Yeah, of course it is. 
But he'll always come back if I call for him. If Finn could hear Chisa in the water, he would always come to her, no matter where he was. Maybe that was the problem. Perhaps she felt like she was holding him back. So you've been trying to put some distance between the two of you? He's a dolphin, and he'd be much happier out swimming with other dolphins, right? Well... I don't think so. Emily flat out rejected the idea. Besides, that's for Finn to decide. He might just prefer swimming with you. At least that's how it seems to me. I hate to admit it, but he's smart. Even for a dolphin, he could make up his own mind. Hmm. How long are you princesses gonna sit around having tea? We're opening soon. Oh, right. Uh, okay. We wrapped up our meeting and started our preparations to open the cafe. Thank you very much. Whew, that's all for today. Emily said as our last customer headed home. Good work today. You too. All right, get this place cleaned up, then you're free to go. Sure thing. <laughs> Chisa sat down on an empty chair, her expression exhausted. You okay? I I'm fine, thanks. You don't look fine. It's just... So much has been going God lately. After Emily arrived, we've all been so busy every day. Life used to be so laid back. She tried to make it sound like a joke, but it was obvious she was hiding something. You know, you can tell me if there's anything bothering you. I'll do whatever I can to help. That goes for me too. We're friends, aren't we? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. What? Just kidding. <laughs> Come on, don't cry. I'm not crying. Even for a joke, that was pretty harsh. Uh, sorry, Emily. <laughs> I'm just feeling a little stressed. Very well, uh, I forgive you, but you have to be honest with us. Tell us what you're so worried about. Emily looked at Chisa with tears still in her eyes. Faced with such an onslaught of honest emotion, even Chisa was at a loss for words for a moment. I've been thinking about saying goodbye to Finn, for good. Goodbye to Finn? Will you guys help me? I don't want to check it out halfway through. Emily and I looked at one another, and without saying a word, knew that we would help Chisa. Oh no, Finn. The next day. The three of us took the outrigger canoe out to empty open water. The sea looked just as calm and peaceful as ever. Every now and then, the calm was broken by a dolphin and a tanned girl leaping out of the water together. Here we go! Woohoo! Thrown upwards by Finn, Chisa soared into the air before plunging back down while Emily and I just watched from the boats. Did Chisa teach him that? No, I think it's just something that happened while they were playing around. Did you want to give it a try? No way, it looks too scary for me. Today was the first time Chisa had played with Finn in several days. From where we sat, it looked like they were playing a game of underwater tag. Chisa tried to get away while Finn chased after her. Even the best swimmer in the world could doubt swim a dolphin. But every time Finn got close, Chisa managed to dodge around him and keep going. They continued to swim circles around one another in the water. It's like they're just dancing underwater. They twirled around one another like perfect partners on an aquatic stage. And we had the best seats in the house. <laughs> Over here. This time, Chisa grabbed onto Finn's dorsal fin, and the two of them swam together. 
After building up some speed, they sprang into another spectacular jump. It looks like they could happily swim together through these crystal clear waters until the end of time. What a relief. That's much more like the chase we now. Sure is. The dolphin and the playful girl. Physically very different, but their friendship was as genuine as anything. The scene played out like a fantastic dream. I could understand why people would want to record it for TV. It would surely move anyone who watched. I felt honored that Emily and I were being allowed to watch. How could she hold her breath for so long? I'd have come up for air long before now. Chisa's special. She's been swimming like that ever since she was little. Even when we were little, she'd jump into the water at the drop of a hat. I'm pretty sure she's some kind of superhero. I wouldn't be surprised. I murmured as I glanced down at the ocean water. Human beings have to breathe with their lungs. Lungs extract oxygen from the air and send it into the bloodstream. But there's another organ that acts like a reserve tank. That is the spleen. According to recent studies, the spleen stores oxygenated blood, which it can then release in case of emergencies. Most people don't use it that much, so it can be so it can even be removed without much impact on a person's everyday life. But for athletes like synchronized swimmers, this organ is used when performing physically demanding underwater stunts. These athletes go through intense training from a young age. Chisa's time underwater over the years had a similar effect on her. As a result, watching Chisa swim was like seeing someone from another world. It was no wonder Emily was surprised. Amazing! She could become some kind of world-class athlete if she really wants to. Probably. She just swims for fun, though. If she felt like she was being forced into it, she'd probably get bored of it in no time. I guess having fun is the best motivator you could ask for. While we were talking, Chisa had only popped up for air once while she, while still playing around with Finn the whole time. There was no indication that this intense workout might be tiring her out. She seemed much happier in the water than she ever did on land. Hey Finn, uh, see if you can do this. <laughs> nice going. <laughs> Maybe she's a fish that ended up human by mistake. A fish? Uh, more like a marine mammal. True, just like a dolphin. Heedless of their audience, Chisa and Finn danced all across their aquatic stage. <sighs> nice to see you again. Just how long are you planning to go for? Sorry, sorry. It's been so long and I guess I just got caught up. You sure about this? Yeah. There was a hint of loneliness lurking behind Chisa's usual cheerful smile. You could change your mind if you want. There's still time. But Chisa's resolve hadn't swayed one bit. I can't do that. He should live out there with other dolphins. If I try to keep him around, he'll never grow up. Chisa. Finn! On hearing Chisa's call, Finn swam over to us, his head poking out of the water. Ee ee. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Ee ee. As she rubbed Finn's nose, he happily splashed about with his fins. He had certainly enjoyed his time with Chisa as well. <laughs> oh, what a good boy. You play nice with uh, your new friends in the pod, won't you? Eee! <laughs> eee? Finn looked worried and could possibly sense his friend's impending loneliness. Shh. Chisa took a deep breath and dived back into the ocean. Finn. Ee -ee. Chisa swam closer to Finn down in the waters, turned to liquid gold by the setting sun. 
After hugging him one last time, she removed the shell necklace from around her neck. She held it up for him to see. E? This is goodbye. She's a let go of the necklace. The shells and cords drifted together towards the bottom of the sea. But... Eee! Finn just swam down and brought it back up. Oh, Finn. She took the necklace back and dropped it again. Eee! 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 But he just went down to retrieve it again. Don't bring it back again. I don't want it. E -e. Good boy. Without another look at the necklace, Cheesa climbed back onto the canoe. E -e 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 -e. Flynn swam up to the surface with the necklace hanging from his snout. Goodbye, Finn. Cheesa waved and started up the engine. He chased after us, but Chisa didn't look back. Chisa, are you sure? This is the only way. He and I belong to different worlds. And we looked behind us, her expression heartbroken. Finn was still following. But when he realized Chisa wasn't going to respond, his fin sank beneath the waters, and we lost sight of him. He had always been smart, even for a dolphin. There was no doubt he knew what she said meant by giving up her shell necklace. This was too much for Emily and I, so we knew that whatever Chisa was feeling had to be even worse. She didn't let it show, though. The sun dipped below the horizon just like it did every night. The world would keep spinning, regardless of our pain. In the sunset, the ocean was dyed a beautiful deep shade of red.